in tonight with Temple in black and Stanford in Cardinal at the keys to the game. These are presented to you by the good folks at David Auto. And uh, Yovana, what do you have for Stanford as tonight's keys to the game? Absolutely. So Stanford definitely coming strong after a very short season last year. Um, some of the thing, things they will be looking to do is reduce their serving errors compared to their uh, yesterday's game at Villanova, as well as they're a very tall team, so they're definitely looking to execute um, on the net by uh, scoring with blocking. And now on the Temple side, two keys for the Owls who enter today at one and one overall. Yes, so I think the key for Temple will be to find the rhythm. They have a freshman side starting. They want to find each other in the court. And most importantly, they want to finish strong. If they have a lead, they have to execute and finish strong. Yeah, going to be tough to get that lead against the Stanford team. We're going to talk some more about it. We've already kind of obliquely referred to it. They did have some COVID issues last year. They snapped a 39-season uh, postseason appearance streak last year. They were only 2-8. and eight. They were only able to play 10 of their 22 scheduled matches. This is not, let me tell you, this is a team that is ranked 21st in the preseason poll. I think because people didn't know what to do with them, they are not going to finish 21st. This is going to be a team that you're going to hear is in national championship contention at the end of this season. Absolutely. They're definitely looking for their appearance in the final NCAA tournament. Remember, the two years before last year's abrupt uh, and shortened uh, COVID season, Stanford won the national championship. Oh, absolutely. The I mean, they had a fantastic team. Yeah. Not only that, but they won the season before that. That's right? right. In 2018 and 2019, Stanford won the national championships, their eighth and ninth in program history. It's Temple getting the first point, but Stanford will answer. That is uh, junior Kendall Kipp getting the first kill for the Cardinal, and they'll take over at 1-1. And Stanford's Libero on the serving line. Good pass by Tempo through the middle. Oh, that was a very strong hit from the outside for Stanford. Stanford scoring again for a one point lead. And that is Katie Baird, who we highlighted in the open. She was the leader for Stanford last season in kills with 140. And the sophomore put Stanford on top, 2-1. to one. Temple passing well. Oh, wow. And that was a very smart tip by Jem Grinshaw, who is now going to serve for Temple. Well, the... Scoreboard in the building did not reflect that last Stanford kill. It is 2-2, and they finally put it on the board there as, Tem as Temple does get back the serve. Jim Grimshaw, who we just spoke about a moment ago, a senior out of Marco Island, Florida. Good pass by Stanford. That was a very good dig by Grimshaw, who is now attacking as well. Very good again. Now remember, since a uh, very good block by Stanford, this is what we were talking about. They have a very tall team. They're going to look and execute on the block. Yeah, let's get another look here, Yovana. I mean, oh, yeah. Textbook was, block position yes, right there. Yep, there was nowhere to go from there. <laughs> that is Holly Campbell and Kendall Kipp combining, and you mentioned their height. Campbell at 6'3", Kipp at 6'5". Yep. It makes things very, very Different. tough for Temple tonight. And that's a free ball for Stanford. Oh, that was that was a very good hit from the back row from Grimshaw. Now think about it. In this rotation, they have the setter up front in the net, which means they only have two hitters in the front row. But Jim Grimshaw has actually been very good executing from the back row. Well, and it gives a little bit of a different look as well as you try to talk about getting Stanford off of those blocks. Exactly. A little bit of trouble for Stanford and service receive and smart use of the block. So all that height for Stanford, they are actually without uh, one of their 6'6 uh, six, six players this evening, Sammy Francis. They've got a really talented incoming class. Part of the reason that, again, Stanford, I think it's destiny that they're going to finish above this uh, number 21 preseason ranking. Sammy Francis is inactive tonight for Stanford, but I mean, you talk about adding 6'6 six, six into this already uh, tall front oh, row exactly. rotation. <laughs> Scary. Rolled over the block there by Natalie Birdie, the junior out of Corona Del Mar, California, who's coming off the bench. And Stanford has their first two-point lead at 5'3". We'll get another look here. 
Yeah, I think Temple needs to pick up on these things, right? So they're playing against a strong, tall team, but when they have rollovers over the block, they have to protect those. They have to pick those up. Quick back set and Stanford scrambling. It's a free ball for Temple. And they're going through the middle, who's hitting on the right side. Back row attack, and again, tooling the block. I think this is where also Stanford having the tall players kicks in. They can hit on top of the block, and they can tool that block. Exactly what we've seen. Katie Bear still in the serving line. It's Falanika Danielson getting the first touch on it for Temple. And, and here I have Bolik Bolshev. attacking seems to be working well for Temple right now. And Temple's last two kills coming out of the back row. One for Grimshaw and now Mirai Bolik Basha gets involved. Yes, we are certainly expecting a lot from Bolik Bashi. She's a very strong hitter, and she's one of the players who's actually really good at tooling the block. Temple this time ready on the block, though they uh, will get called they for touching the net. net touch. And you can see some frustration here from head coach Pakir Ganasaratnam over on the Temple bench. <laughs> Uh, Stanford will get the point, and they will pull ahead by three. It's seven to four in our first set. Holly Campbell to serve. 6'3", senior out of Austin, Texas. Serving just a little too long. Campbell's a player that they're happy to have back. She missed the spring due to injury and uh, started yesterday. Stanford opened their season at Villanova, and she had nine kills in that effort, but uh, misses here on the serve. So Temple will get it back, and this is a freshman setter who we've not talked about yet for Temple, uh, Patty Jelinska out of uh, Poland coming in for the Owls. Yes, Big shoes to step into. Exactly, I was yeah. going to say, she has to replace the setter, starting setter of the past three season, uh, Taylor Lindgren. So she has big shoes to fill, but she definitely seems to be on task uh, with, this, with this team tonight. Temple bringing in two freshman setters, both out of Poland, and it is Jelinska that has won the starting spot. Magdalena Rogalska is the other of the two. Now we see Jem Grimshaw hitting on the outside in this rotation. And again, just to bring the attention now, it was the setter Jelinska who served, so now we actually do have three players back in the front row, three attackers. So here is Cami Miner, the terrific freshman recruit for Stanford. Speaking of uh, talented freshman setters, uh, Miner might be the best one in the country. And here she is setting up McKenna Vicini for the kill. And Stanford now pulling ahead by five. Yep, they're definitely executing well. Um, they're digging, they're passing, and their setter can really use all of their players at the net. Miner was the captain and starting setter of the uh, USU 20 World Championship team. So she steps right in here to the starting setter role for the Cardinal. And wisely lets that one go wide. Papazog will be the, her first hitting error, I believe. So in this rotation, Papazog, who is an outside hitter, is actually hitting from the right side. And Jem Grimshaw, who is the opposite, is actually hitting from the um, outside or the left side. Tough first touch and serve received there for Temple. They do get the it back, back over. Set. That was a beautiful dig. Unfortunately, a double on the freshman set at Temple, and this will be another point for Stanford. And so the freshman setter for Stanford, uh, Miner out of Redondo Beach, will continue her service run. She started her career yesterday against Villanova in fine fashion, 40 digs, or excuse me, 40 assists and 14 digs, double double in her first career match. Wow, Stanford going really strong from that right side. That was number 10, I believe, Kendall Kip. And we'll get another look here as Temple will uh, take a timeout. 13-5, Stanford pulling away early as they get the hit from Kendall Kip. She gets her second kill. We're back with the first set after this.
postseason appearances, and these are numbers you just don't see from Stanford. Last in the Pac-12 in kills, digs, and assists. We have mentioned uh, Katie Baird was a bright spot and a lot of underclassmen. They have brought in some really talented freshman recruits, and Yovana, already you can tell this is a team so much better. They're about, uh, you know, within the next uh, couple days here to have a chance to eclipse their entire win total from last season. As you look at Kevin Hambly in his fifth season in Palo Alto after coming from Illinois, uh, it just it, it is one of the best programs, if not the best program in college volleyball for a reason. Oh, absolutely. And trust me, they're definitely coming back strong and hungry for wins this season. Um, certainly a lot of challenges last year, but they're definitely back to win. They have won six points in a row. Temple taking a timeout to try to blunt that momentum. We'll see what the Owls can do coming out of the break. So this is exactly where Temple, they covered their block. They picked up on the dig or the roll just over the block and were able to execute. This is exactly what Temple should be doing. Oh, they get Grimshaw back into the front row picking up a kill. This is her third. And Papazoglu at the serving line, number 12 for Temple. Short serve, Stanford a little bit out of game. A good touch on the block by Temple. And this is what I was talking about, Bolgbashi. She can really play that block. She can go around, she can tip, she can tool that block. And Stanford wins a long rally at the middle there with Vicini. Exactly, but it wasn't a kill that I was expecting, really. So some of these um, rolls over the block is something that the Temple really can pick up and really um, finish strong there. Well, I imagine, Yovana, as a defense, that's got to be so tough. We've seen the power from someone like Kendall Kip who can just wail away on that right side. And, and then you see so you yes, you're up for that. Yes, you're expecting this <laughs> thunder coming at you, right. But they have to be able to pick on those. Stan Stanford with a dig. And the back row attack, oh, just too short, going into the net, and another point for Stanford. Well, and Temple, you can tell they are out of system. They have had a tough time getting it to Jelinska on these first passes, and they've got to get back in system to have any chance right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Alex Luger, the sophomore out of Encinitas, California, continues to serve for Stanford. They have stretched their lead to nine. That was a good pass by Temple. Grimshaw. There seemed to have been a touch, or, oh, it's an out, okay. I believe that's her first um, hitting error. That's correct. And another point for Stanford. So Stanford has... Oh, there seems to be a challenge by Temple's coach. That is correct. So we get our first challenge of the night from Bakir Ghanasaratnam, who will, will go to the bench. We've got a look as well. I'm just not sure if this was a call for a touch. It was definitely out. The ball was out. The mm -hmm. question is whether there was a touch by the blocker from Stanford's team. Now, a reminder that the video review system that the officials will uh, have access to and to take a look at is not the same angles that you are seeing at home on our uh, ESPN broadcast. They have special cameras that are set up and that they are fixed cameras that look right down the line. I am inclined to think, Ivana, that that ball was hit so slowly. I don't know what the result is going to be, but I think they will get a very good look at it, and this should be a pretty, and it should be a pretty conclusive look. And it was uh, the call on the court stands, so the uh, point will remain with Stanford. No touch. No touch in that block, and Luge, uh number one on the Stanford team, is back in the serving line. So Temple has used one of its three challenges. If they uh, go and to a fifth set, right. both teams get an extra one. And out of system again. Bolbashi was able to score over Stanford's block. So Temple has a one and one record yesterday. They beat Ryder in five sets to open the season. They lost to Delaware in four sets. And, and Bolbashi really is indicative of that swing. She had 19 kills against Ryder to lead the team, only two against Delaware. They need her to be closer to 19 than to two. 
absolutely. And a highlight on the court, Kalinika Danielson um, <clears throat> scored an ace for Temple. Stanford seems to be struggling with these short serves. Um, let's see how this goes. They adjusted. And through the middle, number 14, McKenna Vicini. And that's what the good teams do, right? You beat them on it once, you're not going to get them a second time. Good quick adjustment on court. Absolutely. And here is Elena Oblivi, the uh, sophomore out of Honolulu, Hawaii. We'll have more on her at the intermission. Very good pass by Temple. They were able to get the ball to their center. They were in system. And a very good kill from the right side by Jen Grimshaw, who is now serving for Temple. Here's another look as Grimshaw picks up her fourth kill, uh, which leads all players on the court. Good pass by Stanford on the right. So they really, Temple needs to adjust blocking right side, um, Stanford's right side. Mainly um, number 10, Kendall Kipp, who is now serving for Stanford. Yeah, Kipp has been a huge weapon. Three kills and seven swings. No errors. Paul Bashi with out of system play, but she was able to just tip that block and hit over. Um, bring another point for Temple and is now on the serving line. That is three for Balik Bashi right behind Grimshaw with four, and it's kind of what Temple relies on, those two to be out in front setting the pace. Yes, and that was a very good dig, and actually a hit by the setter, freshman setter. Jelinska, the freshman, picks the right time to dump it over, and Temple's got a little bit of momentum here as they have closed the deficit to seven in our first set. Little Bashi back on the serving line. They seem to be serving Stanford short. Everything goes between 15 feet of the net. Stanford able to adjust there and get it to Katie Baird, who picks up the kill. And is now going to serve. Temple has now two attackers in the front row, with their setter being in the front row as well. Out of system play, and this will most likely be a free ball for Stanford. Unfortunately, too short, and Stanford wins another point. And it has been a bit of a, a tough start for Falanika Danielson. She does have five digs, good numbers for her, but obviously uh, has had to contend with this Stanford attack, both in the service game and in the attack. And you know, it is tough just three matches into her sophomore season to contend with. Absolutely. Temple in general needs to improve when they're still received, but at the same time, we do know Stanford is trying to uh, improve their serving, and they're certainly doing it tonight. And these are, again, these digs over the block that Temple is simply not picking up. Um, and Temple scores yet again with a tip over a block. When you see both teams get a little bit out of system on that point, how quickly Stanford gets back into system right away. They're able to recover, get reset, and again, like you said, Yvonne, take advantage of something that has given Temple a problem, which is that little roll shot. Here's Selena Shu. She had the uh, setter duties last year for uh, Stanford, has uh, seeded those so far to the uh, incoming freshman. And Balu Bashi from the back row. Again, she has definitely picked up um, on kills tonight compared to Delaware's game last evening. Yeah, she's already surpassed her total from the Delaware match where she actually struggled and hit for a negative percentage on the evening. She's got four matching Grimshaw for the uh, match high. Jelinska serving. And another hit from the right side, this time by a middle, uh, and Temple not being able to adjust more block. Yeah, just a matter of getting that ball quicker. That was uh, Vicini who has had a, a nice start in the middle. Vicini tied for the team high with four kills. Another back row attack with a tip over a block. And Kendall Kip again from the right side. Temple's block was there, but simply not able to stop that hit. 
And we will get another Temple timeout here as they take uh, their final timeout of set number one, trailing 23-13. Stanford in firm control of this set as they lead by 10, needing just two points to close it out. So we took a look at the uh, Stanford uh, Spring 2021 season recap. Uh, Yovana, let's take a look at Temple. And in some ways, this is the opposite story of the Cardinal. Temple had so much to be happy about in the spring season. 11 and six record, four and four in conference. First winning season since 2017. Bakir Ghanasaratnam named co-coach of the year in the American Athletic Conference as Temple reached the conference tournament and then made it all the way to the final before falling to UCF. They also had the libero of the year in the conference as a freshman, Falanika Danielson, as uh, she was named along with Grimshaw and Balik Bashi to the all-conference team. We already talked about that career season for Jem Grimshaw. So it was a shortened season for Temple as well, and, and there were certainly COVID issues to deal with in the city of Philadelphia and, and here on Temple's campus. But Temple has a lot of momentum you were here for that regular season ending match where Temple beat Cincinnati to qualify for the postseason. In a lot of ways, Temple's got so much to be excited about it as they come here into the fall. Absolutely, they're looking forward to another winning season. They were really um, riding high at the end of last season. And there was actually a much shorter period between the two seasons, like never before. So they're really on this um, sort of winning streak. They wanna, they wanna finish strong. They want, well, they wanna start strong and they, finish strong this season. So they're definitely looking to do that. Like we said before, they lost their starting setter. They brought two more setters, um, international players from Poland, and they're looking to continue to win. Bakir Ghanis Rottenham in his 11th season on North Broad Street, 167 and 121 career record. Very good dig by Jam Grimshaw, and then Kendall Kipp, and Oh, that was a very good cover by Stanford on the block. And the point will go to Temple. Uh, this large crowd in here was uh, ready to erupt off of that block, and Stanford so quick to uh, keep it alive and extend that point, but uh, Temple wins it in the long run. Here's another look. Yes, and you know, I think the timeout came at the right time. They were able to adjust in their blocking, and they're actually able to stop players from the right side. Still plenty of work to do here for Temple, down by Absolutely. nine. Oh, and that is unfortunate um, misplay at the net, so to say. Stanford able to take advantage, and they get a set point coming here at 24-14, trying to close out this first set. They will uh, bring back Luget to serve. And that is an ace from Alex Luger to close set number one that goes to Stanford, 25-14. Commanding performance by the number 21 Cardinal. They will take the first set, 25-14, and take a 1-0 lead in the match. We'll step away and come back with set number two from McGonagall Hall. It's the visiting Cardinal, the 21st ranked team in the nation, closing it out in style with an ace. We're back after this. Stanford with a commanding performance in set number one as they take the first set 25-14. Temple holding their own early, but Stanford settled in quickly and uh, the balanced attack of the Cardinal. Five kills from Kendall Kipp, four each from McKenna Vicini and Katie Baird, three from Natalie Birdie combined as Stanford pulled away in the midpoint of the set and did not look back. They cruise to an 11 point victory in set number one and Temple will try to answer in the second set on their home floor. Kevin Kott, Yovana Radievich with you here on ESPN's coverage of NCAA Volleyball. It is the final match of the Temple Invitational to open the 2021 season. And uh, Stanford takes a one nothing set lead here into the second set. So 
Uh, Yovana, as we look at both of these teams, obviously a lot went right for Stanford. Let's start on the, the flip side for Temple. What are the adjustments that you need to see for the Owls to be more competitive here in the second set? Absolutely. So definitely one of the things standing out is their service Eve. They need to get the ball to their setters so she can actually start losing all of their attackers. I think um, the stats looking, we have Jem Grimshaw scoring four points, Bolbash is scoring uh, four or five points. Majority of the points are coming from the outsides because these are out of system plays. If they get a good pass to the set that they can start going to the middle, maybe uh, running slides more. Yeah, you're right. Four kills each from Grimshaw and Balik Bashi. No one with more than one outside of those two. So Temple needs to find some additional options. Stanford will pick up where they left off, getting the first point of the second set. And the Cardinal will go right to the serve. Yeah, Kendall Kip with that um, strong hit from the right side scores the first point for um, Stanford in the second set. Kip has been outstanding. Six kills, no errors in 10 attempts, hitting 600 for the night. And Stanford picks up a dig. However, hitting a little too long. Yeah, Stanford uh, was quick to say that that was tipped, but... Uh, they were trying to say they... there was a touch in the block. The question is, are you going to use your challenge on the second point of the set? Probably exactly. not, and they'll let this one ride. And a good pass by Stanford. Very good dig by Temple, a little bit out of system. Bulbashi hitting strong. Stanford digs. Katie Baird hit. Temple dug. And Jem Grimshaw was able to tool the block. And a point for Temple. First lead of the evening for Temple at 2-1 here in the second set as the Owls try to uh, get back into it. This is what happened against Delaware. They dropped the first set, came back to win the second. Uh, they would lose sets three and four. That was the nightcap of uh, yesterday evening's action. And Kendall Kibb keeps going strong. This is now her seventh kill, and she's going back to the serving line. Let's get another look here, and this is just uh, tough for Jelinska. Caught in no man's land. That's Oh, yeah. Temple blocked a little bit late to that as well. That's a rude welcome to a college volleyball for the freshman setter trying to be on the receiving end of that hit from Kip. Yep. And yet another hit from the right side, this time coming from the number three, Holly Campbell, a middle blocker who was running a slide behind the setter. Good pass by Temple. Bolubashi on the outside. Very strong hit over the block, and the defensive players were not able to pick on that. All right, back and forth start to our second set. Temple ties it up at three and gets Grimshaw back to serve. Which means now Zielinska, who is a setter, is in the front row with two attackers. Temple a little bit out of the system, and Temple adjusting, picking up the dig behind the block. Bolugbashi. And then attack for Stanford. Dig by Danielson. And that will be a double, yes, on Temple Setter, Jelin's Cup. That was a good back and forth. A lot of good digs, a lot of adjustments, but both team being out of system at some point. Yeah, here's another look. The double touch there. I'm not actually... I actually thought at first, we can't see it from that angle. I thought at first they had her for stepping under the net, but that was oh. definitely not the call that was signaled. Okay. I think that she did. So the result might be fine if uh, the reason they got there is a little suspect. Yeah, even slowing down, you didn't see much there. And Bulbashi on the serving line for Temple. Going point by point, and it's even a 4-4. Very good serve by Bulbashi. And again, a yet another tip behind the block that was just too short for Danielson to pick up. Point for Stanford by um, Holly Campbell, middle blocker, who is now going to serve.
Campbell, the senior out of Austin, Texas. She'll get to play in her hometown next weekend. Stanford's going to take on Texas in Austin. Yeah, Stanford has a little bit of a um, ro few road games ahead of them, whereas Temple will actually be hosting another tournament at home next weekend. And we'll have three more matches for you right here on ESPN Plus beginning Friday at 10.30 a.m. Temple and Iona. And this is a long point. Both teams um, playing really well to keep the game alive. And yet another tip over the block that Temple does not pick up on. I mean, these, these girls on both sides of the net are playing really hard, running around for digs, running around to save every point. But, you know, Temple really needs to pick up on your tips. Yeah, just great awareness here. You can see all that space behind the blockers. Exactly. Absolutely no chance. And there was Pepper She was right there. So they're prepared. They're just not executing. And that was a serving error for Stanford. There are not many things to knock Stanford on. Service errors would be one. Uh, that is uh, three service errors for the Cardinal, none for Temple. Though, in fairness, Temple has served short almost exclusively, so you're not going to get a lot of errors that way. Okay. They were right there. Unfortunately, not able to pick up on that. Stanford up by two points with number two, the setter, Hemi Miner, serving for Stanford. That's too short for Bogbashi from the back row. Yeah, just got a little bit aggressive on that angle, pushed it too wide to the far side. And they're saying that it was going to be Temple's point. Well, and now we will get the uh, challenge card from uh, Coach Kevin Hambly. Okay, I'm not sure what they were challenging, whether Bogbashi maybe stepped on the line um, because she was attacking from the back row or whether it was out of the ball was in or out. Not quite sure what the call yeah, was. Yeah, so uh, the officials will uh, go to the monitor and get a look. And again, they have uh, access to a separate set of cameras that are uh, positioned all over. Uh, they've got them down both lines. They've got one uh, that looks down the net. So whatever they are looking for that uh, we may not be able to uh, specifically discern right now, they'll be able to, uh, to get the look that they want. And this was a pretty quick review. Uh, they'll uh, make the announcement over there and we'll get word momentarily. Okay, there seems to be a decision. And it will be a Temple's point. So that uh, will cost Stanford their first challenge. Both teams have had one unsuccessful challenge today. They have uh, two each remaining. And Temple will have uh, the serve here trailing by one with the chance to tie. Uh, yes, we'll Senator Zielinska at the serving line, which means Temple now has three attackers at the front row. Stanford sends sets. Kendall Kipp, who is the dissertation hitting from the outside, still going strong and still scores a point for Stanford. So Stanford uh, will get the serve back, leading 8-6, and they will bring in Alex Luger, who uh, capped off the first set with a service ace. She's certainly serving tough today. Yes. Yeah, Stanford has been the more aggressive team. They've paid for it with three service errors, but they did have that ace to take the first set 25-14. Jem Grimshaw with a good hit, but dug by Stanford. And that will be another point for Stanford. By who else but Katie Baird. Well, one of the interesting things yesterday is that Stanford 
had a dominant three-set performance against Villanova. They did not have a player with 10 or more kills. They just balanced their offense so well. They had five players between eight and nine kills. But in that is actually a sign of a good team. That means that they were number one. They were passing well, so that way their setter could actually utilize all of their attackers equally. I misspoke slightly, so Kip had 10. No one had more than 10. Okay. They had five players between eight and 10 kills, but same point, the balance, exceptional for Stanford. Yep, and I think they're doing the same thing tonight with Kendall Kip um, having the most kills and the highest hitting percentage. But um, Stanford's setter, Cammy Miner, is definitely trying to use all of her attackers from the left, right hand side, as well as to the middle. Yeah, I mean, Stanford is a team right now hitting 442. It is a pretty incredible offensive efficiency, and that will add to it right there. Kendall Kip from the right side. Yeah, Temple has not found an answer for Kip. She now has nine kills, no errors. She is hitting 643. That is eye-popping. Wow, that is an impressive performance. Temple really needs to readjust blocking um, Kendall Kip on the right side from Stanford. And now, hitting back, Jeff Grimshaw from Temple's right side, uh, hitting two to two. And Temple's libero, Danielson, at the serving line. And Kendall Kip actually just rolling over the block right in, right behind the block and Temple not being able to pick up on that. I was going to say, we've actually seen less of that from Kip than from the Stanford outsides that have gone to it more, but she shows you she is just as capable of I mean, mixing up her speed. She's a good player. She yeah. has a range and she's showing it. <laughs> a little bit out of the system for Temple. Stanford, and what a kill. One-on-one -on -one for Katie Baird. Whew. Yvonne, last year we were up in the mezzanine level because of some of the COVID restrictions on the floor. Being here at floor level to get a feel for just how vertical that was coming down and, and the kind of pace on that ball. I mean, that, that is a like heavy a, ball. If there was a 12-foot line, that's where this ball <laughs> yeah. landed. Whew. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's one to save there for, uh, for Bear. That is quite a hit. 13-8. Stanford, this is exactly what they did in the first set. This is the moment that they started to get some distance, and in fact, they will force the Temple timeout. 13-8 as the Cardinal find their rhythm in the second set. Looking to go up 2-0. We're back after this. Take a look at the uh, preseason uh, poll in the Pac-12. We mentioned Stanford had won the 2018 and 19 national championships, two and eight last year. Tough to make heads or tails of them. They are picked fourth in the Pac-12. Washington, the overwhelming favorite, receiving 11 first place votes uh, to uh, win the conference there. And as we look at the uh, preseason poll in the American Temple, uh, finished in the top four last year, went to the conference tournament. They are picked sixth this season, even though they return all but one starter. UCF, the overwhelming favorite to repeat as American Athletic Conference Championships. They defeated Temple in the uh, conference championship last year in four sets. So we pick up the action here. 13-8, Stanford leading, and uh, they have won three points in a row. Temple taking a timeout to try to stop Kendall Kip at the service line. 
Yes, Stanford definitely having a momentum here, and this is the point where they're actually starting to distance and make the, um, the advantage larger, but Temple actually coming back strong from each of their timeouts, including this one. So uh, this, is a, this is a positive um, thing for Temple to actually be able to come back from a timeout, execute, and win a point. Grimshaw gets her seventh kill, comes back to serve. And this time, actually, middle serve receiving. However, back row attack for Stanford. Yeah, Kip's got just as much power from the back row as from the front, and uh, she has had a heck of a second set. She's a very strong hitter, and she can put that ball down. Doesn't matter if she's at the net or 10 feet away from the net. Kip is a junior as a freshman. She was a Pac-12 All-Freshman, Freshman All-America by VolleyballMag.com. Not a slump of a sophomore season, but just didn't really get it going. She was second on the team with 84 kills, but nothing that, that really grabs you. But you can see the type of player she is, and she's rounding back into that All-America, All-Conference type of form right now. Her and the rest of the Stanford team, yeah. they're back, and they're saying, hey, we maybe had an unfortunate season due to so many injuries, due to COVID, unprecedented season really in NCAA history. But they're back, and they're saying, we're here to be back, we're here to win. Three set win yesterday against Villanova. They lead 15-10 up a set here in the other side of Philadelphia as they uh, come to uh, North Philly to take on uh, Temple. Well, Bosch is serving for Temple and actually going long to the corner this time. Free ball for Temple after a great serve by Bogbashi. And that was a very good execution. Good pass to the Southern Zelenska, who actually played um, to a middle who was running a slide behind her. This was a freshman middle, I believe. Sophomore, Taylor Davenport. Sophomore. Oh, okay. Uh, she gets her first kill of the night. She, uh, that is. Another long serve. Very good dig by Grimshaw. Papazoglu from the right from the outside. Both teams playing very good defense at the moment. And that will be Temple point um, with Stanford's hitting error. Yeah, just a little bit of a uh, missed set there. Birdie had uh, to cover a little much ground and then got up against that pin. We'll get another look here. There haven't been uh, many misses for Miner tonight, but that time just uh, put it a little bit out of the reach of Birdie. Well, now, wait a minute, we might have uh Might have a challenge? Well, and the challenge is coming from the Temple side, which means that uh, the point as we saw it was initially awarded to Stanford, then they changed it, or excuse me, initially awarded to Temple, Temple. as an attack error, then uh, gave it back to Stanford, and now uh, it will be challenged by Bakir Ghanasaratnam. So these are things that, that can easily be easily be determined by uh, the challenge. In the past, it was really... Uh, so the question is, is obviously that hits the pin, but was that, was off it off block. of the block or off of the initial nice. attack? And that, that look down the line told maybe a little bit of a different story than we saw in real time. And certainly the officials are reviewing it from a different angle, I believe, as well. So the question is, is that, and it's tough to tell from there, is that just off of the tape itself on the attack? It, it bounces off the net and then kind of spins and, and hits the pin, or is that off of a Temple hand? And you're right, that they do have a different look, and they've been quick on the reviews tonight, to their yeah. credit. So they seem to be back to the review decision. And it will be a point for Temple. Now, is it the same rule in college volleyball like it is internationally? If you, if the challenge is actually correct, do they get to keep that challenge? You do not. No, you oh, still you lose, you the still lose the yep. challenge. So okay, so that's a little bit of a different than it is in international correct. volleyball. Correct. Yeah, it's, and there's no penalty for being wrong, but the flip side is there's no benefit to being right. right. So you just you get Other your Other than winning a point. <laughs> that's right. Well, yes, yes. <laughs> Quite a benefit right now is Temple's actually closed the gap to three, make it two on the hitting error. Birdie, number 16 on Stanford's team. 
Yeah, just uh, not able to get the angle on that one as that sails well long. And Bulbashi actually serving really well, attacking. But she's been the most aggressive of the Temple servers by far. She definitely has been. And this is the now a point for Stanford by a middle blocker, Holly Hemble, hitting a slide from the right side. Still just a three-point set here. Stanford up by three as Selena Shu will serve for the Cardinal. And a back row attack by Grimshaw, who scores a point for Temple. So worth noting, looking at yesterday's matchup between Stanford and Villanova, Stanford took that first set in commanding fashion as well, 25-14. But Villanova pressed Stanford in the second and third sets, 25-20, 27-25, actually went to extra points in the third. Now, Stanford still got the sweep, but we're seeing that same pattern play out here where Stanford comes out of the gate very hot. Temple has certainly gotten their feet underneath them here better in the second set than they did the first. You're right, Kevin, but at the same time, let's not forget, this is the second day that they're actually yeah. playing this year. That's right. So um, we see a lot of these uh, pace changes at the beginning of the season where it's actually preseason, someone would still call it. And that was a block by Stanford, for which we actually haven't seen them blocking that much. There's been a couple of blocks in the first set, I want to say, um, they're certainly there, they're certainly putting up a block, but I don't think they've scored blocking that much. No, just the second block of the match, in fact, for Stanford. So one, one in first set and then the first one in the second it set. It was very early on, too. It was something that we mentioned right. as one of the uh, David Otto keys to the game. But they've gotten by with that. Oh, well, there's well. one. Yeah. There's another one. <laughs> <laughs> Add to it right there, Kendall Kipp. They must have heard us. <laughs> And that just is uh, too easy there, right into the hands of uh, Kendall Kipp, who gets the solo block. Stanford's ripped off three points in a row. Oh, and there's another block. Well, this Stanford team starts to get really scary for the offensive production that's been there all night. They're hitting 419 as a team. If you start to turn up the defense and the blocking, and that's why Temple's taking a timeout right now, that's a deadly combination. And this is, you know, where, where you see the quality of teams like Stanford, where they can adjust, right? Uh, very quickly, they say, oh, absolutely, and a team to look forward to be. Um, I do want to say, given that we are uh, at the Temple's game today, um, this type of playing actually hasn't been in Temple's favor in the past. They made it to the tournament last year, right, and failed to beat um, UCF in the finals. But in the past, actually, they were not able to even come close to winning the um, American Conference and to proceed to NCAA yeah. uh, championship. I, personally, I like the conference tournament method. I think that some coaches want to feel like you want to maximize the amount of teams that you can get from your conference to the NCAA tournament. And I look at the situation last year. You know, Temple loses that championship match in four sets against UCF. UCF, regardless of what happened in that match, was going to the NCAA tournament. They were going to get the automatic berth, or if they lost, they were good enough to be an at-large team. I think that the conference tournament maximizes your opportunity because you can get a Temple or a Cincinnati or a Houston type of team in if you get hot on that weekend. Coaches obviously disagree, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes uh, this year. But we will play through Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, the regular season has been uh, extended back to the last weekend in November. And, you know, both of these teams, Stanford and Temple, certainly have their hopes on playing December volleyball. Oh, absolutely. Oh, another and big a, swing. Yes. This time Kip point. goes to the left side, yep. and uh, she is just as powerful over there. She can hit, and she can hit strong. And she's a smart player as well. Um, so she can see the block, hit around the block, and if necessary, even tip over the block. 12 kills without an error tonight for Kendall Kipp. Stanford, after being pushed by Temple midway through this set, it was 17-14. Stanford has won four of the last five points. And a back row attack for Bolbashi, but actually a dig by Stanford oh, and a point at the net by, for Temple. Very good volleyball being played in this second set. Uh, Temple certainly adjusting on some aspects on service Eve, definitely hitting smarter. Uh, but Stanford really stepping up on the, their blocking game. Another set for Kip, who's tipping over a block, and Temple able to pick on that. 
A back throw attack by Papazoglu. Stanford digging that ball. Going through their middle, but Temple coming back. And a tip to a very, very smart play by Bolibashi from the outside. Well, she just found such a great angle here as well. She goes soft and look at the angle on this hit. I mean, almost at 90 degrees, just enough to drop it over the net. I mean, you, you can't place a ball more perfectly than that. And the short serve by Bolibashi. Oh, I apologize. That was Papazoglu serving. Um, and Sam, Sam for being able to execute through their middle blocker. Well, I think Temple did a uh, good job early on in, in keeping Stanford a bit off balance on that short throw. Stanford seems to have adjusted, adjusted properly. Exactly. They got it quick into Vicini there for the kill. And a very powerful hit from the outside for Bolibashi. What I do think Temple would actually start, should start doing is actually now they pulled all of the um, receive to the 15 foot line they should start serving long actually this time and actually push Stanford's uh, service line backwards very good cover by Temple and a back row attack yet another block for Stanford we can't forget the Temple is hitting against 6-1, 6 6-5 blockers. They cannot the case forget that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think Kip might have blocked that off her elbow or her forearm. Oh, yeah, that was one-on-one, -on -one, actually. Yeah, she didn't She didn't need all 6-5 for that one. Another solo block by Kip. That's two in the set. And the service error for um, Kendall Kip. So here you go. Kind of a do-or-die moment right now for Temple. 23-19, but the Owls get the serve back, trailing my four. They need a late service run. Now Kendall Kip is in the back row, which means they only have two attackers in the front. However, well, oh, they went to her in the back row, but we get a carry called against uh, Stanford to negate it. I actually believe she stepped into the line. Oh, is that what it was? I think that's what they called it. So that will get Temple within three as Grimshaw tries to continue this service run. That was an aggressive serve, a little bit out of the system. Kendall Kip from the back row again. Jelinska able to pick that right up. And Bolibashi, Stanford digging that ball, going to the outside to their Katie Baird who scores for Stanford. Well, uh, what a luxury as a freshman setter, Cami Miner to have Kip and to have Baird. So just when things are going wrong, that's like a security blanket for you. They get a little out of system, but you get it right across. I mean, yep. just a perfect finish by Baird. Set point Stanford as Baird comes back to serve. Zoglu from the back row, dug by Stanford's libero. Temple certainly adjusting on their um, defense and a point for Stanford. And that will end the second set, 25-20. I think a little bit of drama there as Temple was deciding whether or not to challenge that call. They won't, and Stanford will take the set and take a 2-0 lead into our intermission. The Cardinal pushed a bit by the Owls, but they take it 25-20 in the second set, and they have a commanding match lead at the moment. Balik Bashi can't find the back court. The, um, the two players, Katie Baird and Kendall Kip, were actually able to execute from all um, really points in the court, left side, um, right side, back, uh, back row, everywhere. And so we will begin the third set with Alex Luger, the sophomore out of Encinitas, California, serving. So Luger will uh, try to sta start Stanford off in the third set. Both teams um, starting with the same six players this set as they did for the previous two. Serving just outside of the court, so first point of the third set goes to Temple. Danielson on the serving line for Temple. And she has a very aggressive serve, but she goes for that short serve uh, that Temple has really been able to pick up on 
And of course, a perfect pass uh, with a set to the right side, Kendall Kip, as she executes for yet another kill. Kip, 13 kills now without an error in uh, 21 total attempts. So hitting 619. It's actually not the best hitting percentage on the team. Vicini has uh, hit 625. And this is... I can see how the average goes to <laughs> 400. Yeah. It is really remarkable. And again, Temple has not been able to record a block as of yet. And a, a rare hitting error there by Grimshaw. 2-1 lead. Um, by Stanford in the third set. With number 14, middle blocker McKenna Vicini serving. And a little bit of trouble in service here for Temple earns the third point for Stanford. of miscommunication in the net between the setter and the middle blocker. And another tip, uh, this time actually between the block, Temple's block and the net this time, um, Katie Baird scores another point for Stanford. Giving a 4-1 lead to Stanford in this third set. A little bit of confusion on both sides of the net, but this is actually typical for, you know, beginning of the mm -hmm. season. Both teams sort of, you know, they are used to playing in system and, you know, throughout the season they will be able to adjust and pick up on some of these out of system plays. Yeah, one of the rare times that we've seen Stanford get caught flat footed, they just did not look ready for that overpass. So Temple gets away with a bit of an error in serve received, they get the point. Katie Baird with another um, kill for Stanford. Kendall Kipp will go to the serving line. That gets her to the back row. And really seeing Stanford dominate the beginning of the third set. Yeah, and this is where you've got to be careful if you're Temple, obviously, dropping the first two sets. Yeah, but they remained close throughout in that second set. Actually got within two late in the set and uh, we'll have to see how much energy they have left oh. in the tank. There's some Very energy right there. Very good by Tampa. And they actually blocked Kendall Kipp, who was hitting from the back row. And I believe this is first block for Temple in this entire game. And one of the little interesting things is that is the loudest probably that this building has gotten. You forget after having a year with no fans, what it means is probably over a thousand uh, people, many students here tonight for Temple. And so, you know, that blocking element has been missed by the Owls. And if you can get that going, get the crowd into it, they, they need everything certainly to go their way here uh, in this third set to try to dig out of this uh, two set deficit. And they certainly don't have the height um on their in their favor temple's team being slightly shorter than stanford but they can certainly put up a good solid block katie bear serving for stanford and that will be stanford's point uh temple's hitter katarina papazoglu hitting just outside of the court that gets baird back to serve for stanford leading by four That was a good pass, um, attack to the middle, and a little bit of confusion, confusion on Stanford's side this time. Jam Grimshaw from the back row. And yet another point for Stanford by that tip just over the block. Temple's players were there, but not able to pick up on it. Yeah, you can see uh, Papa Zoglu is uh, the one in the vicinity and uh, just couldn't get there in time. And the serving error by Stanford's um, Katie Baird. Yeah, it's now uh, six service errors uh, against Stanford. Only the one ace. Right, so we did say that they made a lot of serving errors. So mm -hmm. they were probably trying to go for aggressive serving. Um, but with six errors and one ace, 
they may want to back up on back off on that. Yeah, if you're going to serve that aggressively, you want to see it benefit you in a few more aces. Yep. They get a uh, dump here from Cami Miner. Uh, the freshman picks up her first kill. Really quick hands from Miner. Oh, she has been brilliant tonight, but she also has good um, attackers to work with as well. That's a back row attack from Temple. I believe that was both Bashi from the back row, who, as I said before, is very good at um, using the block, which is what she did this time. Temple Seller serving. That was an aggressive serve. Put Stamper out of the system. Temple readjusting. Um, this is a long point. Both teams playing good defense. And Grimshaw scoring by a 2 to 2 hit from the right side for Temple. And maybe the longest point of the evening, if not one of them. And uh, Temple, after falling behind early on, has gotten it back to within three, a chance to uh, make it a two point set here with Jelinska serving. Better pass on Stanford side, but very good dig by Temple on Stanford side again. Good block by Temple. A very smart hit by Kayla Spells from the middle for Temple. And Temple is only now two points behind Stanford. There's a lot of momentum on Temple side at this moment. When it is just the second kill the Temple has gotten out of their middles, the first from Spells. There seems to be a little bit of disconnect between um, Temple's middles and the setter. And as I said, at the beginning of the season, these things are not atypical to see at this point of the season. Uh, but they certainly have a lot of work to do ahead of them. Temple has now won four points in a row to make it a 9-8 set score behind Jelinska serving. And they should be careful because they do have Stanford setter Cammy Miner in the front row, and she definitely has quick hands if she wants to tip. This time she uh, uses those quick hands to get it into the middle of the Cheney for the kill. Who, of course, tips over the block. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Temple not being able to adjust it this time. 10-8, Stanford leading as Miner comes back. Uh, un unbelievably, Miner, who we have uh, talked about tonight, she is the number four ranked recruit in the uh, nation by uh, Prep Volleyball. And we have not seen tonight the number five recruit in the nation uh, because she is out due to illness. That is uh, Sammy Francis. So I believe is, she's the tallest. She is the 6'6 <laughs> freshman. Uh, and, and I'm just wondering, you look at the Stanford attack, where do you fit a 6'6 freshman into it? And, and you know, Coach Hambly came over and said she will be one of our starters. So, oh, yeah. I mean, this team is going to get only more dangerous than the version we're seeing oh, tonight. absolutely. I mean, you walk into a gym and you see Stanford's team. Uh, and, I mean, I'm 6'4", and walking by them has actually been, like, Oh wow, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, felt you're looking short. Up. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a scary thought. You don't, you don't do a lot of that. I don't look people in the eyes very often. No, not me. <laughs> I, can, uh, I can confidently say not me. <laughs> oh, very good dig by Temple's Danielson. And Temple actually picking up. They're digging, they're playing defense, they're adjusting, and most importantly, they're actually hitting really, really well this set. Yeah, Temple hitting 357 in the set. Only 189 overall tonight. And yet another short serve. That ball most likely hit the floor. Yeah, even uh, Falanika Danielson was trying to get Balik Bashi to, to <laughs> not, uh, not even raise that as an issue. Yeah. I believe that was Katie Bear from the outside for Stanford. And Alex Luge back in the serving line for Stanford. Stanford up by two, 12, 10, 12 to 10. The serving here. Yeah, in a uh, tight third set, Stanford has given a couple away on uh, service errors. That's seven overall this evening. And now uh, Danielson you will know, come back to serve for Temple with a chance to tie.
And a very good play between um, Stanford's setter, uh, Miner, and Stanford's middle blocker, I believe this time was Vicini, McKenna Vicini, who was actually following her setter and was able to hit behind her setter, a quick from the behind. And uh, we see Malia Tafunga come in, the sophomore out of Costa Mesa, California, to serve. And she dug this ball, free ball for Temple. They really need to execute here. And a little bit of that oh, disconnect between um, number 14 middle blocker Taylor Davenport with the setter Zielinska. As I said before, it's mm -hmm. always the biggest um, connection to establish once you get a new setter is between the setter and the middle blockers. The second consecutive oh. serving oh. error for Stanford. Yeah, this has really uh, turned into a bit of a problem here in this uh, third set. Our Stanford is hitting 429 as a team, but only leads by two because they've hurt themselves in some other ways. And Temple being able to pick up on their game as well, um, which is what the score reflects is too. However, still no solution for Kendall Kick. No, right through the block that time. That's just pure power. As we'll get another look here, Kip gets her 15th kill of the night. Temple's block will really have to adjust for her. I would actually, hey, close the line. And yet another serving error, this time by Kendall Kip. So that is three service errors in a row by Stanford. Yes, it was Luge, then Tufuga, and now Kendall Kip which still gives Temple only two points deficit. A little bit out of system play for Stanford. Temple able to dig that ball. Very unfortunate uh, disconnect between Taylor Davenport and Seder um, Zielinska on Temple's team. It's been such a feast or famine start to the season for Davenport, who's just three matches into her sophomore season. So to be fair, there's going to be some inconsistency. She had a career-high 15 blocks against Ryder, then only one against Delaware, and uh, has uh, one today with only one kill. And here's Stanford's block. That was a little bit of a short uh, set as well. Certainly more work to do for Temple, not only for tonight, but going forward. It's not easy to fill the big shoes of Taylor Lingering, who left after three seasons of when she was a starter. Um, but Temple will certainly have to look for that connection between the setter and the rest of the team. We will take a break. Stanford starting to get some separation. They lead 17-13, taking advantage of some Temple miscues and stepping it up in the blocking game once again. The Cardinal, eight points away from a sweep. Oh, into absolutely. There's no lack of talent, but you know, these first few games always go like that. It is an opportunity for teams to recognize what are the elements of the game they need to improve on as they go further into the season. And Katie Baird serving for Stanford. Another serving oh. error. I mean, it has been an epidemic right now for Stanford of poor serving. That is 10 errors. With no aces. Mind no, you. yeah, there's right. not, so yeah. it's aggressive serving, but it's actually not working in their favor right now. Yeah, minus nine in that differential. One ace, ten errors. And now they've made up for it by, you know, getting a side out, it seems like, virtually every time. So they're just trading points. So they uh, temple. But this time, actually, hitting error for middle blocker Holly Campbell. And this is how powerful um, Kevin Miner is. Yeah, and she, even your setter is six feet tall. That, you know, just goes to and show you. And she looks short compared to the rest of the team. <laughs> I know, it's an optical <laughs> illusion. I can assure you she is quite tall. And uh, Miner goes up and uh, wins that battle. Good physical play at the net. And Temple completely out of the system, giving a free ball to Stanford. 
And, uh, and the Jelinska. outside. Yes, outside. Stanford's outside. Natalie Birdie scoring for Stanford. Yeah, Jelinska had a, an uh, opportunity to try to run that one down off the block. Just a step late getting there. And so the uh, libero, Oglevy, who we uh, talked about coming out of Honolulu. It's to serve here. And a smart play by uh, Jelinska on the net. You can tell that she's looking on the other side of the net and see what's going on. She saw that spot and placed the ball right over the net. And she's now on the serving line, which means now Temple will have three attackers in the front row. And a serving ace for Jelinska. She's in a roll here. So Jelinska follows up the kill with the ace, and uh, just like that, she has gotten Temple within two, 19-17. And this is really how Setters can carry uh, the whole team. She made two very um, good calls, very good points at a um, very good time of the set. And that was a hitting error by Stanford. And just like that, Temple a chance to tie this set at 19 apiece. Stanford has uh, hurt themselves in some ways that we have not seen in sets one and two. Jelinska keeps serving tough. However, very strong head by Katie Bear from the back row for Stanford. Gives Stanford another two point advantage going towards the end of this third set. Well, and what it does is it gets Kendall Kipp back on the floor. So that will help the Cardinal as well right now. Kipp leading the way with 15 kills tonight. And that was a very good point by Temple. Good service Eve um, and very well executed um, from the outside. That would be Jem Grimshaw. Yeah, right between Kip and Vicini. And, and Tom Grimshaw with a little bit of pure power herself. Papa Zaglu comes back to serve. Kendall Kip, but Temple was able to dig that ball. And now a free ball for Stanford. Temple playing very good defense and um, adjusting throughout the game. Unfortunately, Stanford too strong with a hit through the middle. Well, they just keep coming at you, and you can play great defense as Temple did for so much of that point, but they'll just come right back again with Vicini, who gets a powerful hit, gets a break off of the tape there, and Danielson just not able to come up with it. Stanford leading by two, and they bring in Luger has been a, a serving specialist for the Cardinal this evening. And that was a slide run by Kayla Spells for Temple. And just a brutal hit down the line by Baird and uh, absolutely nothing that Jelinska could do about that one. And after Temple uh, had and keeping it within one, now Stanford back-to-back -back points. Cardinal lead by three. Temple will use their final timeout, and uh, this is the do-or-die moment right now for the Owls if they're going to try to extend this match. Yes, this is the point where it, it really can go well for Temple. Let's not forget that every time they were called a timeout, they came back and they were able to win that point. So if they can make that happen, they will only again be two points away, which will make it an interesting um, end of this third set. And Temple has uh, fared pretty well coming out of their timeouts in, uh, in this match this evening. We'll see Stanford has not looked as strong in the service game here in uh, set number three as they did in the first two. So can they keep the momentum up right now and uh, avoid letting this interruption get to them? 22-19, Stanford trying to put the finishing touches on their second consecutive sweep here in Philadelphia. They beat Villanova 3-0 yesterday. They will head home to Florida before uh, ping-ponging uh, back uh, to Austin, Texas. Minute, I mean, looking at the schedule from here on out, Florida, Texas, Minnesota, Penn State, Nebraska, Kentucky. I mean, that is an insanely difficult non-conference schedule for Stanford. And that then you get into the Pac-12. 
Exactly, I mean, but you know, wow. these are the teams you do want to play and compete against, right? This is the level that they expect and need to execute on. Here they go, three points away. As Luce, the sophomore out of Encinitas, California, will uh, continue or try to continue her service run. And a little bit out of system for Temple. And even though that looked like a block, it was actually Bulbaji who was able to tool the block, and there will still be a point for Temple. So Temple gets a badly needed point out of the timeout with Balik Bashi, and now Falanika Daniels in back to serve. Good to receive by Stanford. And yet another tip through the block this time by Katie Beard um, for another point for Stanford. Middle blocker McKenna Vicini at the serving line for Stanford. They're only two points away from winning this game. A little bit off the receive for Temple, but a very good set by Zielinska and um, execution through a hitting of Jem Grimshaw, who is now serving. Temple 21, Stanford 23 in this third set. That will actually be an ace for Temple. Now they're only one point behind. 23 for Stanford, 22 points for Temple. Jam Grim Show back at the serving line. One thing we have not seen from Stanford tonight is a timeout, and I wonder if Temple can tie it at 23 if uh, Kevin Hambly will uh, take his first of the evening. This was a very good service even. And of course, it goes to Kendall Kip, who's actually stopped, but the con point continues. Oh, that was an unfortunate point um, that goes to Stanford that now has a set and game point, I mean, 24. You, what a miscue by Temple. You have Oglevy out of system, hits the pass over on the Temple side of the net. The out's just not ready for it. Now match point for the Cardinal. And Stanford will get a free ball. Going to Katie Baird, who scores and brings a win um, for Stanford. 25-22. They finish it off in style. They go back to Baird, and I mean, that was the story tonight, Yovana. Katie Baird, who we knew to anticipate coming in, and also Kendall Kipp, who looks like she is poised for a comeback season here in 2021. 15 kills, one error for Kipp. 14 kills, one error for Katie Baird. This Stanford offense, extremely impressive. Absolutely. I mean, we knew that coming in, we were looking for...